Hey guys, Marion the Barbarian here, coming at you with what is this? Part four of vegan soap bases. We're using Katie's Bubbles to the Mango, thanks to CDB, who's off grid right now. How great is it? He's gonna be gone for like four days and come back and then see Marianne the Librarian make an appearance. So, since I don't like soap always ending up in the bottom of my bowl and sticking, I took some warm water Y'all see in there, guys? Let's tilt it and not lose it, right? I put some warm water in there. Not for blooming purposes, but to soften. Because I don't like the soap still being left behind. Oh, crap. You got a daughter hair in here. There we go. But anyways, so I do it to soften the soap. I'm trying to figure out alternatives so I don't have stuff left in the bottom. And generally, this bowl, thanks to Carlitos, I lather like a rock star, and it's not the issue. It's more of an issue in Captain's Choice and the Shaving Grail. Still working out how to figure out that Shaving Grail a little bit better. At first, I thought put it in the uh, honeycomb holes in the middle and agitate there and bring it out. But I think you should maybe put it in the bowl and then build the lather on the honeycomb. But... We'll see. I was going to lather and make this video short. So sorry, guys. You're not getting a short video. So, guys, I'm using my spiffo. It's called Edgewater. I haven't used this on camera. This was my first hand turn, not custom, but, you know, handmade brush. High Mountain White. Man. I may not have left enough water in there, but we'll see. I got plenty of water in that bowl. So we're going to start getting that lather. Did I say this Katie's Bubbles to the mango? Make sure we get that out there. It's a lovely scent, honestly. And normally I'm not a fruity guy. Like, you never see me go to fruity scents. And CDB sent me like seven or eight samples of this stuff. So we'll have fun with it for sure. Get to try it. All different scents. This is the easiest one to read. He likes to, you know, abbreviate things, like calling himself CDB and me NTB. And so I think he did, like, the Letier, whatever, the Vetiver or something it is they have it there. And it was, like, LTVF or something like that. I think that might have been what that soap was. I didn't really look. So we're just working it, guys. I haven't added more water to this. Obviously, y'all been watching this, right? We're just kind of... We're going to back and forth, making sure I'm getting everything out of the grooves. It's how I'm working it, guys. I am not an expert bowl latherer. I'm just doing what I can to get all the soap out and hope that while getting the soap out, I'm building a bit of a lather. And then once I feel I got the soap out, that's where I use just the tips, guys. And I just get there and I start swirling and kind of back and forth and swirling and back and forth then I pull it out bring it back to the middle work it again work it again try to get the bubbles out I feel like I need to beat it more and more and more to get the bubbles out I think I was talking to Chris Maiden he said the one thing he says he shit about bowl lathering is it's always too airy and I found that too but like the times that I feel that I've done really well and I've been able to like really knock down the density. This is really nice, guys. Like, I wasn't going to. I don't know. We'll see what I'm still going to use. I'll smell two different splashes and see what I feel like is going to complement this well. But the more I smell this two to mango, CD will be, CDB will be like, dude, you're totally wrong. But this fallout splash over here kind of smells a little like it. Just a little. Scent strength, by the way, is not strong on this Katie's Bubbles. But I did leave it in a bowl, smeared in the bottom with uh, cellophane over it for two days. This this video is going up late tonight, too, guys. I think it's like, it's 11.56. Ooh, here's a kid's surf for you. Wristwatch check. Yeah, that's right. It's old school Casio. You know why? Because it was like 15 bucks on Amazon, and I'm tired of buying watches and breaking them at work. So, has the date, has an alarm, has a stopwatch, little, uh, little illuminator button, man. Back to the 90s, back to the, back to the late 80s, 90s, whatever. When this one breaks, I think I'm going to get a nanomatron, or I think that's what they're called. 
gold, you know, bling, bling, bling. So, all right. I think this may be a little airy still, guys, but we're going to go with it. And I know I've been using uh, synthetics for these testing. We're just going to lay it on thick and see what I can do as I put it on. So, it's a decent lather, actually, guys. Probably like straight razor shave with it the way it was wanting to fall off the brush like that as thick as it was. Um, what was I say? Got caught up in the plane with the lather, guys. Sat in a bowl. Cellophane over it. Was that, was that what I was talking about? I think I might have done this well. Oh. I was talking about brush synthetic. First of all, I wanted to use this brush. Tired of using the same one on camera all the time, and I do like switching it up. I mean, my quarter moon is my go-to, but come on, guys. Sorry I'm playing, but this brush has a really nice face feel. My wife says it looks like a old-school, like, big powder makeup brush. But when I got it, it didn't flare out like that as much. When I... Use the towel and stuff. And uh, do my drying on the towel and everything when I'm done. I shape the knot the way I like it to look. So, oh, here's the other thing, guys. Got damn shaving cream on my hands. Don't want that on this slick ass DE89 handle. So, someone wanted me to compare. And if they want me to compare either one of these to my Merker 1904, because that's the closest I have to another Merker um, head style, I will. Now, I'm going to tell you differences I'm going to know about this that I can't execute. You see the lower head profile we got going on here on the card right here? Which this is the card B plate. This is the DE89. I think they said they wanted the B plate compared. Lower profile head. This is harder to get all the way up under my nose, like all the way in the crack. This is not. As for aggressiveness, I think this is going to be more efficient, not necessarily more aggressive. Midnight alarm. So, I'm going to Chris Maiden this fast since I talked to him. I can't with the goatee. Oh, and just so you know, guys, I pulled blades out and I put in those. German Wilkinson swords. And the blade feels not more on this. And honestly... Now that I've got the B plate on here, I really need to get the straight bar C plate. I had the C plate in open cone, and I also got it earlier in my, like we like to say, my journey in this. And it bit quite a bit, especially up in here for me, and a little down here. And I think it was just lack of technique. What do you think, Chief? Was I not using good enough soaps, or, or was it my lack of technique? I'm just playing with Chief, guys. If y'all seriously think that we got any beef going on with Chief, then y'all are not paying attention. We just, he likes, he likes instigating things. And, uh. You know, he's doing really good about keeping the conversation about him right now. Or at least he was for about a week. So, and you know, when you want to declare war with CDB, <laughs> he's got a bit of an army. Look at that cushion, guys. 
it's not super dense by any means. Um, as in comparison to anything else I've made, this is nothing like um, anything else I've made actually out of the other three I've tried. Um, it's a lot lighter, it's a lot fluffier. Um, density's not the same. So. So full disclaimer here guys, I never really paid attention to like, tallow versus vegan. And here's the reason why. Um, by the time I found, I shouldn't be going this way with some one, but anyways, um, never really paid attention. And if any of y'all ever go online, and I'll try to find this soap and link it for you guys if you're interested to the mango, Katie's Bubbles. And I link things just so it's easier to find. When I watched guys, I like the links. Because I didn't know where to go. What was new? But you guys that are following me, y'all probably aren't really fucking new. By the time you've gotten to me, you've fallen down that rabbit hole, because how the fuck else are you going to find out about me without watching other people? So, guys, this was really a nice lather. And just so you know, still smell motherfucker on this towel. Because I haven't changed it yet. And it, it still smells like motherfucker. How pretty is that, guys? Is that a pretty decent lather? Here, let's have some fun with this. I, I don't normally do this. So what do y'all think? I could have done more. It's a little bubbly. What do y'all think? Beat a little more? Did I just... Overhydrate it. Didn't feel overhydrated. But the more I mess with it, it really looks airy and bubbly, guys. It wasn't that airy and bubbly on my skin. So or on my face. Sorry, playing with lather, it's kind of fun. See what happens. Give it a rinse, feel some residual slickness. We'll do it to my face too. Now, honestly, guys, oh, what I was saying, Douglas CK6, he said, you know, he hates people that says tallow or lanolin, you know, gives you the most cushion or gives you, you know, the biggest peaks and the densest lathers and the best face feel and all this stuff. And supposedly, CK6 is like, been a long time coming, trying to figure out how to come up with this epic formula to compete with tallow. So I just always assumed that that performed like tallow. All this being said, I'm telling you as I'm using things and finding out, and I'll probably use another Katie's Bubbles here soon, but I am getting a Nye Basin. Hopefully tomorrow it got delayed, should have been here today. The chief uh, gifted me the grooming department Nye Basin. I told him to send me a sample, but... He said, dude, 45 second load is crucial. And I said, okay, I'll make sure I remember that. He's like, I'm just gonna gift you the whole thing. I was like, dude, I just I just need a just need a sample. He's like, no, you gotta do it from the tub, 45 second load, crucial. I'm like, okay. 
So I reached back out and I said, hey man, I've been using um, synthetics, you know, and badgers that you use and stuff have more backbone, pick up a little bit, pick up soap a little bit better than my uh, quarter moon. I said, what do you think? Should I uh, load it for like 60 seconds or maybe a little longer? And he's like, well, why don't you just switch to bad badger and, you know, use the information, you know, and give it a good shot because, you know, 45 second load with, he didn't say all this, but his point pretty much was, you know, 45 second load with badger is what you need to get a good lather out of nine. So it's kind of why I went to this. Probably use this brush again tomorrow. Shits and giggles, you know. I don't know why I'm doing all this cleaning in front of you, but see, I do all that and then I sit back and I just like to make this one look pretty. I don't know why. I mean, what do y'all think, guys? Isn't that a luxurious bulb? going on on the, that knot and it's got I mean it's a really nice space feel it's super soft high mountain white mm, that is a good soap going on in there so guys haven't used this yet St. Martin's land I'm gonna use it because I haven't tried it I've got the soap haven't used it yet <coughs> okay here's my PSA for everybody guys Put your finger over PAA Splash. Turn it completely upside down. See that? Slight jiggle. Releases a little bit of the splash. And you don't have to worry about it going everywhere. You don't have to worry about pouring over the label. That is not an orifice restrictor like you see in other artisans. Not dogging other artisans. Think PAA even did this for a while. This is a nice scent. Mm -hmm. I really like that. So, my whole point is you don't have to worry about pouring over the labels if you execute it that way. Does not work with orifice reducers. The little plastic things that go inside. Let's see if I have one. Hmm. Fallout should be a good orifice reducer. Does not work in the same way. Old Splash, though. Old Splash. Old Spice Splash does work in the same. By the way, this is Champion. You can only get it in the UK, I think, um, or Europe. I had to order it from there. My wife says it smells like 90s airport. <laughs> Whatever that means. So, I shouldn't have put the splash on immediately. The face feel is quite nice, to tell you the truth. Um, the one thing I can say about all these bases is they have left with a good face feel. I still like the way CK6 feels and performs, and this one I should have done it better, but the last video with Ariana and Evan Shea Butter, I left that post-shea feel on there for a while. I wiped it off and left it feeling that way, and then I rinsed. I should have done it this time, but... When I first started using PAA, sorry, I've got some lather on my mirror and it's just bugging me. I can't live with it. But anyways, um, PAA started to dry too. I just, PAA was a soap that I could legitimately take my towel, wipe when done, and go about my day and my skin just felt so supple. Um, don't know that I could get away with any of that with these soaps. But that being said, none of these are any slouches. And I still feel like Southern Witchcraft, now that I understand differences in bases and everything. Um, yeah. Southern Witchcraft performs more like a tallow. The tallows I'm used to using. Well, wow, guys, I still didn't get all that soap out of there. CDB sends a really good sample size. And I said, F it. And I smeared it all in the bottom of the bowl. So that's what's left. Which is a good amount, really. I probably could have given the soap more of a <laughs> circling in the middle. So anyways, guys, to recap. 
You just saw the soap bowl. Um, Katie's Bubbles, two to mango. Spent a lot of time showing you that Spiffo brush after I spent time cleaning it, so I don't need to show you really. Well, I'm going to show you again because I love the looks of this brush. Like, guys, I was beekeeping at the time. So, in my opinion, the honeycomb was super sweet, and it's supposed to be silver in there. Like, he put the silver in, and then he poured the um, acrylic over the silver honeycomb, and then he turned it. And I got to admit, it's really cool. I like the coin on the bottom of a custom or handmade brushes. It's the first time to get a coin on the bottom of a nice brush. Stupid things I know. You're like, who freaking cares about that shit? But, you know, all that stuff's kind of cool to you, you know, especially when you're getting a new brush and you see all this stuff. And you're like, well, I've never had one like that. This one was that way. So to recap razors, I'm just going to tell you, man. I like my car of Christopher Bradley B plate. I think I could have gone up to a C plate. Um, I haven't used this in a while. And y'all have seen me use this more recently. And so tonight I will fail. I will tell you the angle was more intuitive to the DE89. But that's also the razor I'd been using recently as a double edge other than my Lady Gillette. So, yeah, Argyle handle, three and a half inch, love the thing. Like I said, maybe I should get a C plate on this. But you can't go wrong with this razor. Very good price point. The only thing you don't like about getting this is noobs, even people that aren't noobs. You know what our problem is? We over tighten um, the heads down. So it does affect blade gap, which is an issue, and then metal tolerances. You're causing um, structural issues on your posts that you're screwing your handle into. And nickel and stuff, pop metal, whatever this is before they chromed it, is not going to hold up as well as brass. So, the moral of the story is, guys, both of these are very good price points. Both of these are very good introductory razors. Introductory razor where you're going to start and you think you're truly going to stay there. And you're going to keep it through. This is a great price point. Like if you're that guy that wants to buy your Dovo the first time you start straight razor shaving. Which guys don't buy a Dovo your first time. Just there's so many other options. Why spend 120, 150 bucks on a damn razor that's blah. You know it looks blah. Like if I'm going to spend 100 bucks. I'm going to tell you you can get some seriously decently nice straight razors for 100 bucks. And they look way better than a brand new Dovo. Okay, guys? So, that's the point there. But let's, sorry, I got off on a tangent. I had to talk about that. But this is for that guy that does want to start at the higher end. I say higher end as in higher end quality. Um, I think overall, if you get the three-inch handle in this, I think you're going to pay around 80 bucks American for this whole setup. I could be wrong, but I think that's what it is. 80 something dollars. This is like 35.99, 39.99, something like that. You get my point, guys. It's where do you want to start? Where do you want to start? Do you know this is something you're going to do? Um, but like I said, you're going to get good shaves out of the DE89. The only way this gets expensive is if you start, if you buy a base plate that you feel is too aggressive, which I'm going to tell you now, if you feel you buy a C base plate and this is too aggressive on C or B, work on your angle and your technique, you may be a noob. It's, it's all I'm saying. It's just not an aggressive razor in my opinion, but it is super efficient. And that's what matters. I hate when people use the term aggressiveness for efficiency. Aggressive doesn't mean efficient. In my opinion, I mean, I understand that's the words they were using interchangeably, but in my opinion, aggressive means more blade feel. Um, th that's what aggressive is to me, more blade feel. Um, I, I don't think I can explain it any more than that. Aggressive means more blade feel. You can be efficient without being aggressive is my point. 
you don't have to be aggressive to be efficient. So, anyways, guys, I think we recapped. I think I talked to y'all. Sorry, it's late and I'm tired. Talk to y'all like crazy. I had to deal with customs in Australia, guys. <laughs> that was a pain in the ass. Dealt with that for a while. <coughs> Excuse me. So I think we're done talking. If there's anything I left out, anybody wanted any information, hey, dude, you didn't mention this, you know I'll take the time. I might even write you a paragraph back when I get a chance to tell you, hey, sorry I didn't mention that. Anyways, guys, I hope you all have a good one, and hopefully tomorrow night I can finish up this damn series with the Nye Base.